right guys, so um, welcome back. Been just a minute since you guys have seen the boat in the shed. So uh, anyway, uh, today's, today's a pretty big day really. It's kind of the final steps to actually finishing this boat, um, you know, 100% so to speak. So uh, today I'm going to go through and this is going to be the first steps in actually lining this boat. Um, so I'll just kind of show you here. This is the mess that I've got. I just pulled the boat in. Um, I just got back from a fishing trip. This is how it looks. Um, all messy and dirty and everything else. So anyway, um, many of you guys that have followed this whole series, you know that the whole time I was talking about that I wanted to line the inside of this boat with some sort of a, a truck bed liner or, you know, similar material. Uh, and I did not do that you know, after the initial large part of the fabrication for the simple fact that I wasn't sure if I wanted to change anything or, uh, you know, if I needed to make modifications, things of that nature. Just easier to weld whenever I don't have the, the liner on. So that's why I waited. It's been five months now. I've been running this boat for five months. I fished out of it in every different way I can. Had this boat on big lakes, small lakes, big rivers, small rivers, Mississippi. I've had it in three different states. I've got all, about all the fishing that I'm going to do out of this boat done. And so, you know, I, I feel very comfortable in, in finishing out the inside of this boat, um, you know, where I won't have to make changes in the future. So anyway, I'll just kind of show you, um, be quite honest, I, I really didn't have to make hardly any changes. Um, the one thing I did back on the back end here, uh, and I talked about this during the build, was that this whole area just there was just one flat kind of unused space. So I ended up taking and making that little fenced in area cradle or whatever you want to call it. And my cooler, my big cooler sits in there, uh, you know, so that way I can have it on longer trips or hold food or whatever. But that way I can strap it down, it stays up there out of the way, keep it off the floor. So anyway, um, other than that, the only other thing that I really did to this boat was I had three small pieces of the track system uh, left, and I was kind of holding off because I figured I'd use them up somewhere, and I ended up just welding three pieces on uh, right there. And basically, I, I had those vertical rod tubes up on the gunnel to hold my spider rigging poles whenever I move, but it kind of got in the way, and... I couldn't put the cover on this boat whenever they were on the gunnel. So I moved them down there. And then uh, the center piece there, I ended up moving the mount for the grill off the gunnel as well. It's just a little better location for it. So anyway, other than that, um, I added a couple more additional rod holders down the side. So where I can actually, in this boat, I can go fishing. I can have uh, all, all my spider rigging rods down this side if I want. And then I can hold... Uh, you know all my catfishing rods down this side everything's off the floor and still easily accessible and i can still have you know 20 rods or whatever i want in the in the rod locker nevertheless so anyway what i did what i'm going to do here is um our annual trip to canada is coming up in a couple of weeks and i want to get this boat lined before we go to canada because luckily it hasn't been this hot of a summer but as you can imagine you spend a day out in the sun on, in this boat and you come home and the underside of your chin is sunburned from the glare. You're essentially sitting on a mirror, uh, you know, having all this aluminum. So anyway, I'd, I'd like to get this boat uh, lined before we go, you know, up to Canada and sit in this boat for 12 hours a day for seven days. So anyway, this is the project I'm taking on now. As you can see, the boat's a mess. I need to clean completely everything out of this boat, 100%. The whole boat needs roughed up. Um, so probably what I'm going to do is take just a wire wheel and just run over the entire surface just to scratch it up enough to where I can get the primer to hold. I say primer because I'm going to end up doing this myself. Uh, I talked rhino lining, I talked uh, line X, I talked all sorts of stuff throughout the build and after talking with a bunch of people about it, um, the line X and the rhino lining people, I come to the conclusion it's just easier to do this myself. Uh, those they had a lot of worries about all the hatches and latches and everything um, you know because that's a big spray on deal not only the fact of that but the cost was going to be very very uh, the cost is significant between doing it myself and and having it done so 
Anyway, it's going to be a lot more work on me, which is fine. Um, I've got the product. It was actually one of you guys who first turned me on to that product. Uh, it's a monster liner, truck bed liner. It's what I would consider a high-end do-it-yourself kit. Uh, it's definitely not the cheap go to O'Reilly's get the Herculiner stuff. Uh, this is this is pretty legit stuff. So anyway, I'm going to uh, do that, and in that way, this boat will be uh it'll basically be done except for outside paint and to be quite honest i'm not that worried about that for a while but uh the the monster liner product it it, it looks pretty cool i feel like uh, it's going to be a good product it's it's a rubberized coating and it's 100 percent uv protectant so I'm, I'm very happy with that one other thing is i was also able to uh to get it in different colors which i think is really cool so I'm sitting on the front of the boat here and if you can imagine all the vertical surfaces being blue and then all the horizontal surfaces being gray is kind of the color scheme that I'm going. So anyway, that's a lot of talking. That's a lot of rambling. I've got a ton of work to do here just to clean out this boat and then to scuff this thing up and get ready for the epoxy primer. There is almost, there's just a hair over 280 feet square feet of uh, inside dimension in this boat. So it's a lot of work. Look how shiny it is. <laughs> that is one shiny boat now. All right, so what I've done here is I've taken a, um, a wire wheel and a flap disc. I ended up using a flap disc on the floor simply because five months of flopping fish and dried fish slime and mud and everything else was a little bit more than the wire wheel wanted to take off. Um, so anyway, I have ground every single square inch of this boat. Uh, it took me just a little over three hours. So this is prepped for the epoxy primer base. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to address uh, all my hinges all my exposed hinges. So now I'm using an epoxy primer, which is a thick, thick primer, and then I'm also going over it with the lining, and I have these exposed hinges. This is what I'm talking about, this exposed hinge. It sits flush with the floor, but it's exposed. So if I end up getting, getting paint and stuff inside that groove, it's not gonna roll. So how I'm gonna address this is um, I'm going to take and I'm going to mask off the area on each side of it and I'm going to take self-etching primer. Um, I've used this stuff multiple times on, on aluminum boats. It does a wonderful job as a primer. Self-etches. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray that self-etching primer in each one of these grooves on every single one of my compartment openings. And then after that's dry, then I'm going to come back through and I'm going to mask that off and then I'll line right over it. Um, and then after the fact, I'm gonna come back through and since it's just a small area, I'm going to get a, uh, a very close match paint and I'll paint that to match. So um, on the ones on this upper, on this deck here, the upper ones, that'll be a grayish tint. Uh, and then these, these vertical ones here will be the blue. It's moving forward, but it's just, you almost got to appreciate the shininess of this thing. All right, guys. So finally ready to uh, start putting the primer on. So I'll just give you a look here at the, at the boat one last time here. So you can see um, there was still a lot of masking, even though I took out, you know, a lot of the stuff. But uh, anyway, I've got everything masked off that I need to. Uh, so very happy with that. Uh, you can see, like I was talking earlier with the uh, the hinges. So now I've taped what I painted, and then that way, uh, you know, after the fact, I can pull that tape, and uh, you know, all my latches will still still work. So other than that, really nothing uh, nothing special except for uh, you know just ready to paint. So it is the next day here, um, and boy, I tell you what a what a difference uh, just having this boat one color makes. So uh, here's the uh, the finished finished boat 
with the primer coat on it. I mean, it already looks great. I can only imagine, uh, you know, what it's going to look like after I get it coated. Uh, but to be quite honest, I'd be happy with just this. So, uh, anyway, if this is any, any indication on how the, uh, the liner product is going to be, how the, uh, how the primer went on, I'm going to be very, very satisfied. Um, so, like I said before. I'm All right. So, uh, this is the next day. This is day three of this project here. Um, so far, I've put in two very late evenings after work. Um, and hopefully, this will be the, this will be the end of it. So... Uh, this is the next afternoon. I finished up last night late with the uh, the lining of the blue, and I must say it turned out very nice. Uh, I am very, very pleased with the way this product worked. Uh, see if I can give you a kind of a close up here. Uh, you can kind of see it's not super textured, and that's that's fine. That's kind of exactly what I what I was wanting is is what I ended up with so it's a very consistent texture also uh, all the way through all right so just got done with all the taping that was just a little bit of a deal took a minute uh, there's there's a lot of tape there's a roll and a half of tape so there's like 90 yards of tape <laughs> there uh, so anyway what I did was I, I realized it's probably hard to see because I used blue tape against the blue backing but uh, I went up four inches all the way from the bottom uh, let me see if I can find you a good a good area here so you can see there's the edge of the tape there's the edge of the angle so it's a nice clean edge that I can go up to um, let's see down here very similar uh, these are the welds let me see if I can show you here what I did you can see right there that's the bottom of the weld bead so I'll just run right up into that. There's so much moving around, guys, that it's not really worth me to set up a camera. Uh, I'd have to keep moving it, and I'm, like I said, I'm in and out of this boat, and I'm working with this stuff, and I'm, it's just easier just to kind of show you like this rather than do like a time lapse. Anyway, check back with you. All right, guys, so, uh, boat is, uh, boat is coated. Check that out. Doesn't that look different? So it really, uh, really, really changed the appearance of this boat. Uh, it's like night and day. I guess you could say it kind of took the, uh, the homemade out of it. it. Really looks like something now. So anyway very happy with uh with how everything turned out very happy with the product um like i said everything worked real good uh on the on the gray on the second coat i went quite a bit heavier uh on the application than i did with the blue um and it it seemed to go very well also i went very uh very generous with the coating up on the front deck area here and then on this secondary platform um, and then just because I knew this was going to be a high traffic area and I just wanted to try to find, try a little something different, uh, on the floor, you can see it's got a little bit different texture to it. It's, uh, it's quite a bit more aggressive of a, uh, I guess of a, of a covering, as you can see, it almost, uh, it's kind of from, I'm looking at it through the camera lens right now and it, it it doesn't really do it justice through the camera lens, but it kind of looks like that you took a concrete stamp, like a real random patterned stone concrete stamp, and stamped the bottom of it. And what I did was I actually poured the, the coating onto this floor, and then as it slowly hardened, I kept putting the roller to it to get the real random aggressive pattern. So uh, the, the bottom of the... Uh, the bottom of the floor you can see who ten lines um, but anyway it's it's a real rubbery real real rubbery um, it's it's probably close to a quarter inch thick uh, in some places on the uh, on this bottom floor so it feels real good under a bare foot uh, which is what I wanted you know so like I said everything else turned out really really nice um, just kind of show you here 
what the lines came out to be. That's the taped lines there. Uh, turned out really, really nice with the with the tape joint. Um, let's see if I can come here and show you. There's the the taped lines where I ended up welding and went to the bottom of the weld bead. There's some more over there. So anyway, very happy, very satisfied with this product. Um, you know, especially this is my first time using it. Uh, all in all, it took me, and this was cleaning out the boat, this was grinding it, this was um, primer prep, all, the, whole, the whole thing. I had just about 20 hours, 20, 21 hours uh, invested in this, which I personally don't think is very bad at all. Uh, some of you guys may say that's a lot. Some of you guys may say that seems about right. But if you figure that, if you figure two, if you take it somewhere, they're going to throw two guys on it. So that's two guys just over a day, uh, you know, a day and a couple hours. So really, really, I feel like that, uh, you know, everything went, went pretty smooth. Um, very happy with the, uh, the end result. So the only thing that I have left to do, uh, I've got all my tape removed is you can see where I, uh, primered the, uh, the hinge points. So I've got color, pretty, really close color matching paint to this, um, just a Rust-Oleum rattle can. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mask off everything around the outside and I'm going to paint uh, all the, the hinge points with the, uh, the spray paint. And then that way that'll take away that, it'll blend it in real nice uh, and I'll still be able to open and shut my doors because as you can tell, you know, that's a thick, thick coating and it's hard. So if I were to go over it, I'd have never been able to open any of these doors. So uh, anyway, like I said, very, very happy with the end, end product, end result. It really, really transformed the look of this boat. So um, hopefully tomorrow I can get it out in the sun and let you guys see it in the sunlight because I know these lights don't do it justice. But uh Anyway, very, very happy with the product. Everything turned out very nice. Um, like I said, very, very straightforward kind of a deal. The product uh, that I used was, was, was very well explained. So anyway, now all I got to do is put this boat back together. And uh, then she's going to make her first voyage up to Canada here in a little bit. So she'll be looking nice and fresh and new crossing the border.